Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Teen mom Amber Portwood. She was sentenced to go to rehab, but chose a prison sentence instead. Now out on parole and on stage with Dr. Phil. This is actually my first time on stage sober, so I'm really nervous. This reality star finally comes clean. You were high in rehab. You were high while you were shooting the show. Every time you see me on that show, I am high. And Gary, look at me. The question about Gary that brought her to tears. I hate talking about this. A Dr. Phil exclusive. You tried to take your own life. Did you really want to die? I didn't care. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Well, she was one of the most popular teens on TV, but her only talent seemed to be tantrums, beatdowns, and bad behavior. I'm talking about Amber Portwood from MTV's 16 and Pregnant and Teen Mom. Now, her epic highs and lows of teen motherhood were all caught on tape, from giving birth to her precious daughter Leah to beating up her ex-boyfriend Gary. Now, her angry outbursts, drug addiction, and domestic violence charges plastered her face on every tabloid and even landed her behind bars. Take a look. Reality star Amber Portwood. Troubled teen mom Amber Portwood. Amber Portwood. Amber Portwood made TV history when she became a TV teen mom. But it's what she did after that that kept everyone talking. In 2009, Amber and boyfriend Gary welcomed baby girl Leah into their lives and the lives of the viewing public. Does she come with any instructions? Unfortunately, life after that joyous moment wasn't quite as pretty. The cameras in the world saw a lot from Amber and Gary, especially an insight into their tumultuous relationship. Look at me, Gary. In two different episodes in 2010, Amber was seen violently slapping, punching, choking, and kicking Gary. One time in front of their daughter, Leah, and that got the attention of authorities. Amber was in hot water after she was shown beating down her baby daddy, Gary Sherlock, on camera on the hit MTV show, The Violent Smackdown, sparked a police investigation. As a result of those highly volatile scenes, on December 27, 2010, Amber was arrested on three counts of domestic battery and held in jail for 24 hours. She pleaded not guilty and was released on a $5,000 bail. Life after jail didn't get any easier for the young mom. Gary eventually got full custody of Leah, and Amber was again arrested for several probation violations, including being found with pills, failing a urine test, and lying about it. She was given the option of continuing with drug court or going to prison for five years. Amber shocked many by choosing prison. Amber Portwood is headed to prison once again, this time on drug charges. But the big shocker in this chapter of her saga, she actually asked the judge in her case to lock her up instead of sending her straight to rehab. On November 4th, 2013, after serving only 17 months of her five-year sentence, Amber was released from prison and now finds herself starting over. Why did Amber choose prison over rehab? Has she gotten her anger under control? Is she ready to regain custody of Leah and be a full-time mom, perhaps for the first time? Do we know the real Amber Portwood, or do we just think we do? Well, before her 15 minutes of fame, Amber says she did not exactly live a charmed life. My childhood wasn't the best childhood, but it wasn't the worst. I had a working mom, a working dad, and my brother and I pretty much had to grow up pretty fast because we had to take care of ourselves. I grew up around addiction. My dad was an alcoholic. It was terrible. The first time I started doing drugs, I was like nine. I think I smoked weed for the first time when I was like 11. And then I was like 12 or 13, the first time I took a pill. I met Gary when I was about 14, 15 years old in high school. Gary and I were amazing in the beginning. He was like my knight in shining armor. Gary and I were together for about two and a half years when I got pregnant with Leah. When I found out I was pregnant, I was scared. I went home and I was crying, and Gary told me everything's going to be okay. I hate talking about this. And just how good we were then compared to 
to know. I think I was about three months pregnant when MTV started filming. It was like overnight fame. We couldn't go anywhere. People knew who we were. The money was coming in. And both of us had never really had money in our lives, so it was just all brand new. It was just crazy. I definitely didn't know how hard things were going to get. Well, Amber says the constant pressure became too much for her, and she turned to drugs. That spiraled into a whole new reality for her. After I had Leah, Gary and I started fighting more, and I started doing drugs again. I was addicted to opiates, hydrocodone, oxycodone, morphine, that stuff. <laughs> I was angry, frustrated. I was just on the edge all the time. I can't remember half of what happened on the show when I hit Gary. I was high every single time. The first time I went to jail, it was only for 24 hours. And I got out, it, it did nothing for me. It didn't change anything. The second time I went to jail, it was for three months. And then finally I got into drug court and I ended up using within a couple weeks. So I made the hardest decision I have ever made in my entire life. And I said, I'm opting out of drug court and I opted for five years of prison. I've learned some really hard lessons these last five years. I'm on parole, I don't have a second chance. There's just so much I can lose that I'm not willing to be immature and lose it anymore. I'm absolutely never going back to prison. Well, it was February of 2012 when Amber shocked everyone when she decided to quit her court-ordered rehab and choose a five-year prison sentence instead for an illegal prescription drug charge. Now, the 23-year-old reality star served 17 months behind bars and was released just a little over a month ago for good behavior. She's here today for her first television interview, so please welcome Amber Portwood. Hi. Yeah. Nice to finally meet you. Well, it's, <laughs> it's good to meet you. Um, you have had um, a busy life. Yeah. You got pregnant when you were 16? 17. 17. 17. I had Leah when I was 18, actually. Okay. Yeah. Let's just jump right into this. First off, how in the world did you get into all of this mess? I noticed in your in your interview, in your tape piece, you said you were around addiction growing up, right? Yeah. Are, are you aware that you may be genetically predisposed to I it? am. Yeah, I am. Um, I believe not exactly I'm genetically exposed. I believe it's more of my environment I grew up in. I think I'm a product of my environment, but... Now, you wound up... We're going to talk about why you chose prison, but the truth is that the show that you were on aired some violent behavior yeah. of you attacking your boyfriend, the, the father of your child, Gary, you attacking or hitting him, kicking him. We saw that. Why were you doing that? Why that way of expressing yourself? My God. Um, wow, I was completely lost back then. I was... I don't even know how I can explain this to somebody. I, not only was I in my addiction, I was just in a, a, a bad situation. I had this money. I had these pills. I had this crazy life. I had... I was fighting with Gary all the time. You know, I just... That was my way of getting my emotions out, getting my depression, getting my anger. Were you high? Oh, yeah. When you were doing that? Absolutely. So while you were on the show, every, while you were attacking him, you were high. Every time you see me on that show, I am high, except for when I was on 16 and pregnant. N never did it straight? No, never. This Always is my, high. This is actually my first time on stage sober, so I'm really nervous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's it look different to you? Does it feel Everything's different? more clear. I feel I feel all the emotions, which yeah. you know is scary actually for me. Right. But it's it's good. I, I like feeling all this. And you did some of this in front of your daughter. I did. Um, and that's what got the attention of CPS yeah. and the authorities, right? Yeah. When we come back, Amber says she's ready to be a good mom to Leah now, but has she changed? And if so, why? We'll talk about that after the break. You were high in rehab. Yes. You were high on house arrest. Yes. You were high while you were shooting the show. Yes. You were high while you're beating on Gary. Yeah. Monday on Dr. Phil. Don't talk to me when I'm mad. 
A mom out of control. I have tried to tell Jessica to stop yelling. Leave me alone! Your job is not to yell and scream back and forth. Doing what? Yes, you are! A family in crisis. You need to get help. I don't like you. You are a drunk. You are a rageaholic. And if that was seen by the wrong people, those children would be out of that house like that. America's most watched talk show. That's Monday. Even though I always loved Leah, I completely wasn't there for her. When you're an addict, number one in your life is your drugs. And you know that if you don't have those drugs, you're not physically moving that day. You're not able to even function. When you're on drugs, you are a very selfish person. Back then, I was very snobby, just all about money, all about partying, all about men. I didn't want to live the mommy life. I definitely think I was a bad mom then. Well, Amber Portwood, the controversial star of MTV's Teen Mom, made headlines for her outrageous behavior on and off camera. She was caught on tape, beating on her ex-boyfriend, screaming in front of her child, and battling with a drug addiction. Because everyone was watching, her critics had no problem judging. They called her a bad mom. But today, in her first television interview since serving 17 months in prison for violation of probation, she wants to set the record straight. She says that she has changed. You say it's hard to watch that. Yeah. How it's, do you feel terrible. when you watch yourself? I go back to the I go back to the moment pretty much, mm -hmm. and I uh, it's embarrassing. You know, I'm watching myself act a complete fool. It's embarrassing. It really is. Do you feel badly for beating on Gary? I feel terrible for hitting him. I really do. How do you feel about him? I love Gary with all my heart. He's an amazing person. He's sweet. He's funny. He's a great guy. We're just toxic together. <laughs> yeah. What triggered you at the time? I mean, what, what got you so angry that you would attack someone like that? <laughs> I don't know. If a lot of people know about this. Um, I think it came out like the season after. But three days before we started filming, um, he had told me that he had cheated on me. So really, I believe that day I was more mad. Anything, he could have been the sweetest guy that day, and I probably would have went crazy anyways. You know, I, I was so pissed off at him that all I wanted to do was strangle him. You know, um, so really it, it wouldn't have mattered if he was nice or not that day. But you feel badly about it now. I do. I really do. Do you miss him? Uh, I mean, we, we're still in contact, you know, because of Leah and we're really cordial. Um, I mean, I miss, what I miss from him, I don't miss him who he is today, but I do miss who he used to be. I miss the way that we used to be. Like, it's sad. It makes so, me really sad to think about it, so I try not to. It's sad that that has gone. You've lost that. Yeah, because honestly, it was an amazing relationship yeah. in the beginning. I was with him for seven years, so now, long time. He's been in the press a lot lately. In fact, there were some things written the other day that said you two were back together again. That's not true. That's no. not true. He has a girlfriend. Right. Yeah, he has a girlfriend that he's been with for a few months. And, um, yeah, that's not true. Now, this got so bad for you that I know in June of 11, uh, you had a failed rehab in there, and you tried to take your own life. Yes. Did you really want to die? I didn't care. If I woke up, great. If I didn't, it was all right, too. Um, I didn't, like, sit and make a decision, okay, I'm going to die today. This is what I'm going to do. But I, uh, I didn't care. You know, I knew what the amount of pills that I was taking was crazy. But it didn't matter to me at the time. Like, everything in, in my life then, what I thought is that everything is, is excuse my language, turned to <laughs> You know, I have nothing anymore. What am I even here for? She had a daughter. I did. But she was not in my life. And I was, I never got to see Leah. And once again, I'm not saying this to like bash Gary, because he's a great guy, but I didn't see Leah ever. Should you have seen Leah if you were high all the time? If you were Thinking violent now, and blown no. up? No. Was Thinking it the now. right thing to withhold you from her? Yes. People had no idea how bad it was at the time for you. No, I how was. How deep into this I you was were. Pretty good at masking it with people around me, you know? Uh, but no, it wasn't good.
I did um, 60 days in rehab in Malibu. At this right. time, I was in drug court, right. which is a rehab through the courts um, in your county. Right. And I had been in drug court actually for two and a half months. I had been in rehab for two and a half months, and Already. I was using. I was still using, and I was actually using worse. In uh, rehab? Yes. I was using a drug. I'm not, I don't really know if I'm going to say whatever. I was using a drug called fentanyl, which I'm not going to give anybody any ideas, but let's just say you can – it doesn't show up unless you send it to a lab. So I was using that, which is, a, it's patches. It's really dangerous. I opened up the patch and I would eat the patch. It's like a three day patch. It's very dangerous. And um, I was using that the whole time I was in there with a friend or whatever she was. Um, while you were in rehab. While I was you're in eating, drug court and on house arrest. You're eating fentanyl patches. Crazy, you were, on house arrest. So you were high court. in rehab. Yes. You were high on house arrest. Yes. You were high while you were shooting the show. Yes. You were high while you're beating on Gary. Yeah. Uh, you were even Not chewing. An excuse, you were even chewing one of these patches during a drug test. Yeah. I would have. I would have it in my cheek. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I know it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy to me now. Like, but back then it was, it was normal, I guess. All right. Well, we're gonna take know. a break. When we come back, I want to know. I want you to take me through the moment that you decided that prison was the better choice for you. Uh, Amber says she's always going to have anger issues, so how does she deal with her next frustration, her next temptation, and who should be raising this child, Leah? We'll be right back. <laughs> Had you tried to kill yourself the night before you went in there? Yeah, yeah. it's just hard talking about that. I've been sober for about two years. I'm very proud of myself. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. But my greatest fear of today is using again. Every day waking up as an addict, you want to use. I hope that one day I have a day where I'm not thinking about getting high or where I can get certain pills. I haven't hit that day yet though. 23-year-old reality star Amber Portwood battled a prescription drug addiction of Vicodin, Ambien, and fentanyl patches. She used other things as well. In 2011, while on probation for a domestic violence attack on her ex, Gary, she found herself in trouble again with the law. This time, it was for possession of illegal prescription drugs. So she was sentenced to go to rehab, but chose a five-year prison sentence instead. Now, after 17 months behind bars, she says she's sober for the first time. This is the first time she's been on camera. Uh, sober, which is refreshing. I'm glad you saved it for me. Um, <laughs> I've talked to some that showed up pretty high. We all know who would be on that list. Um, take me through the moment when you made the decision to do prison. Oh. Um, a couple of days before I had, because every week you go to court. To, so they check up on you and see how you're doing and with everything. Um, but a couple of days before I had to go to court, um, I actually was taking a lot of pills and that, that was the moment actually where I didn't care if I was going to wake up or not. And I kind of told myself, if I wake up, something needs to happen because this is out of control. I, re I remember that day, I was very high. I walked in there and I, I said to the judge... Uh, You're high in court. Yeah. Every time I went to court, I was high. Yeah. Had you tried to kill yourself the night before you went in there? I mean, you yeah. said you took a lot of stuff and didn't care. Yeah. Was that a suicide attempt the night before you went into court? Yeah. All right. And it's hard talking about that. Uh, but I, I know that's a dark time, but how did you square that with yourself? Because you say, all right, I, I am going to kill myself. Leah will be without her mother. That wasn't a thought in my head. That's the bad part. I thought in my head that she would be better off without me, which is stupid, by the way. So you're high when you go into court the next day. Yeah. Take me through that moment. Well, um, the whole two and a half months I had been in rehab, I, every week that I went to court, I always went you know, alone or like my mom would come. And this was the first time that Gary actually went with me because I knew I was opting out that day. I knew I was going to prison. 
Um, so I had him come with me kind of for support, you know, because I was really scared. I was terrified. I walked in, and I, uh, I remember being in front of the judge, and I said, um, there's not a program out here that's going to help me. I said, I'm going to opt out of drug court. Send me to prison. The decision that I had was it's either death or it's prison. Now, which one's worse? It was pretty equal then for me. So that was my decision. Was it hard to make a decision that you knew would take you away from your daughter for five years? Yeah. But like I said, at that time, I felt. She was second off. to the drugs, right? Yeah. She. All I wanted to do was get high. That's I was. You have to understand as an addict, if you can't wake up in the morning and even move out of bed if you're not high, like you're physically ill, like you can't even function, especially in certain kind of drugs that you use. So nothing compared to that, nothing compared to drugs. Did you miss her when you started to come down? When I was sober, straight? it was, it turned into hell. I, uh, worst part about being in there is missing people and I saw her three times when I was in there. We come back what is Amber's plan to get custody and what does she think of the other controversial teen moms that have made headlines like Thera and Janelle but most importantly what about Leah? We'll be right back. <laughs> I have a lot of goals in life. Right now, I'm working towards my future. I want to help people. I started a new organization called Never Too Late, and it's pretty much about how it doesn't matter where you've been or what your past is. You can always change. You can always accomplish what you want to accomplish. Also, I'm starting school in January. I'm going to be a great mom to Leah. I just want to be happy. Well, teen mom alum Amber Portwood spent 17 months behind bars, but she says it saved her life. She not only sobered up, she also received her GED. Now she says she's ready to be a great mom, and she even showed off her new attitude in a photo spread uh, with her daughter Leah in the December 23rd issue of In Touch magazine. Very cute, cute <laughs> little girl. Uh, she is a cutie pie. Oh, yeah. And obviously <laughs> very, uh, very, very comfortable with you. Yeah. Why will you not relapse? You said because you think right about there. it every day. You fight, you fight it every day, right? Because I'm clear-headed now, and I just think about the consequences and think about Leah. You said you have anger issues and that you will always be angry. How do you deal with that? Because you go, now you're convicted, right. you're on parole. Mm -hmm. You go slapping somebody around now, yeah. I mean, it's Bad. a short ride back. Yeah. I treat my um, my anger just the same way as I do my addiction. Um, I'm always going to have it, you know. It's I know how to cope with it now. I know the tools. I know how to, to calm down. And I, the main thing I do is I just I actually think about my consequences, and I know that I don't have a second chance. Will you get custody back? Eventually, I want to have joint custody with Gary. We're doing really good, though. Do you want the spotlight now? It's not important to me. It's This isn't about fame right now. The things that I've been through, I want to help other people. That's why I'm doing this never too late dot me. It's because I want to give, show people what I've learned and help them also, people like me, um, give them tools, you know, how to be healthy in, in every aspect of life, things that I'm actually doing right now. Yeah, but of course, you got to take care of you first. Yes. And Leah. Yeah. Uh, before we do now. There are others that have been this path that have done some crazy things like sex tapes and things like that. Is that in your future? Uh, no, that's not happening. It, uh, no. The sex tape thing is actually, it's weird because I was actually, um, when I was in my craziest times partying, I was asked by Vivid to do a sex tape. And that was about three or four years ago. And I said no. It's crazy. I, I, it's, I don't know. And I actually said no. Uh, it's weird to see uh, people that you know and you would never think do something like that. Yeah. Well, my Twitter feed has been blowing up about Amber. Um, and I think they kind of have the uh, same reaction to her today that I have, uh, actually. Uh, Vicki Whitworth, at Vicki Whitworth said, Amber, 
Self-realization and honesty looks good on you. Proud you were able to dig deep and do the hard work. Don't stop. Uh, Marion Greer says, thanks for sharing your story. I'm proud of you. You made the right choice. You gave your daughter the greatest gift. Uh, Ann Bridges, 222, says, do this for your daughter. She needs you. Keep it up. Um, I love that. So uh, the viewers at home are really pulling for you. I love that. I need that. I need that. If you knew then what you know now, would you have ever done those TV shows? Yeah, it just would have been different. <laughs> it would have been. Done them, but done them differently. Yeah. I, I want you to remember that, I, I, and I've always said, life is managed. It's not cured. You don't cure your life, you manage it. That's and right. If you have something to move towards, which is your future with Leah and being there for all of her recitals and soccer games and the, all of the things that you can share with her, that gives you a reason to get up and get high on her instead of something else. And uh, I, I, for one, girl, am pulling for you in a big way. Thank you. Okay. Amber, thank you so much. All right, next, another team who says she was facing death's door until her angel came to save her. We'll meet them next. I was addicted to meth, pills, alcohol, and I was mad at the world. No foster family would take me. Arlene saved my life. My next guest says she can relate to Amber's story of addiction. Kaylee was addicted to meth and marijuana. She took pills. She was a runaway. She was kicked out of rehab and detention centers. She was such a troubled teen that no one in four counties would take her in, except one foster mom. Take a look. Arlene is not just my foster mom. She is my second mom. Arlene is my guardian angel. She took me in when nobody else would. When I was 14, I was addicted to meth, pills, marijuana, and alcohol. And I was mad at the world. And no foster family would take me based on my file. When Arlene had an opening, they had asked if she would be willing to take me, and she did. Before I went to Arlene's, I was lost. I didn't care about myself. I was in a very dark place. Arlene showed me that she loved me and that she cared about me. And that showed me that it was okay to love and care about myself. About a year ago, Arlene was diagnosed with cancer. When I found out that Arlene had cancer, I bawled my eyes out. I didn't know how I would do if I, if I actually did lose her. Arlene is definitely the most selfless person I know. She always puts herself last and her needs last. Sometimes her needs don't get met because their last. Right now, Arlene has four foster boys living with her, and foster kids have a lot of appointments, so she's constantly driving all over, taking kids to appointments and meetings. Everybody comes first before her. I absolutely miss Arlene. I've seen Arlene once in over five years. Arlene saved my life. She made me the person I am today. I'm happily married. I have two amazing children. And I owe everything to Arlene, and I can never repay her for any of that. Well, it's good to meet you, and it's good to see that you've made some right choices in your life. Was Arlene a big part of you making those choices? She was a, the part of me making those choices. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have made them for myself. Now, why did she take you in when nobody else would? Because we, you notice when I was introducing her, I said nobody in four counties. Because they checked your county, the neighboring county, the neighboring county to the neighboring county, the neighboring county to the neighboring county's neighbor's county. And everybody said, oh, hell no. <laughs> we, we don't want nothing to do with this girl. Why did she step up and say yes? She always takes the kids that nobody wants. That's just her. I mean, she'll look at a kid and say they need my help, and she'll do it in a heartbeat. I, she's just amazing, I guess. So why did you write to me about her? 
I wasn't trying to get her on the show. I just wanted her to be able to see a show. I wrote the show right after she got diagnosed with cancer. And, and you know, she always loved you. She's a big fan. And so I just wanted to get her in the audience so she could, you know, see you, not to have her here. And something yeah. I could do for her. You know, she yeah. deserves the world. After learning more about Arlene and how she's been considered mom to over a hundred foster children throughout her life we wanted to meet her you all know that robin and i are national spokespersons for casa court appointed special advocates for foster children and then when we find a foster parent that does what she does it, we just know what a gift it is so instead of having her sit out there in the audience she's going to come on stage and sit right next to me so come on out arlene <laughs> Well, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm nervous. You're nervous? <laughs> yes. Well, don't be nervous. Just can you climb up here? I sure. got you, Mom. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been out here talking about you. I heard. So why, why are you giving her the evil eye? <laughs> no evil eye. Yeah. Why did you take this then not head in? <laughs> When nobody else would. I mean, she was she was what Trouble wanted to be when Trouble grew up. And nobody would take her. You took her. I rarely say no when they call me. I, I usually just say I'll try. And then when they get there, you know, I try. Yeah. I try when I, you know, the best yeah. I can. Now, you were diagnosed with cancer in 2012. You're in remission now, right? Yes. So things are going well. Now. How do you feel about being here today? <laughs> I never thought this would ever happen. Yeah. <laughs> How do I look in person? <laughs> you look great. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, there's Robin. You can see Robin I know, there, I saw her. You've already, you've already <laughs> yes. found her, huh? Yes. So why do you find her? Everybody comes and finds her before they even look at me. <laughs> um, all right, let's take a break. Coming up, Kaylee says Arlene never does anything for herself. I have some advice on how to change that when we come back. We can't do this show without you, our studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Yeah. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Arlene has never met my daughter. Looking at Madison while I was still in the hospital after having her, I just really wish Arlene could be there to meet her. When Arlene meets my daughter, I will be so excited. That's the one person that has helped me turn my life around. And for her to meet my daughter would just be amazing. I owe the kind of mother I am and how I interact with my children to Arlene. So I'm the kind of mom I am because of her. Well, Kaylee was a very troubled teen, and she says that she was rescued by an angel an angel named Arlene. Arlene has been a foster mom for almost 40 years. She has helped over a hundred kids like Kaylee along the way. Now Kaylee is now married with two children of her own. They don't get to see each other very much. They, they talk now and again, but they don't get to see each other very much. Ten weeks ago, Kaylee had a baby girl, Madison, and she wanted Arlene to meet her and uh, bringing her out so you can meet her uh, is someone who Arlene always asks about. Another former foster daughter who also says Arlene saved her <laughs> life. We're talking about Nicole. Come on out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, if you're going to be a crybaby, I'm going to be a crybaby. <laughs> I am. Right. Nicole, good to meet you. Thank you. So you were one of the foster children uh, as well. How long were you with uh, Arlene? I was with her a year and a half, almost two years. Almost two years. Wow. And y'all haven't seen each other in how long? It's been five years, I think. Five years since you've seen each other. Now, what do you think of this little one here? Oh, she's beautiful. She is beautiful. That, she is how old now? Ten weeks. Oh, just ten weeks old? Yep. That is a very low mileage baby. You got right there. <laughs> that, just ten weeks old. And her name is Madison. Yep. What about Arlene makes her so different? What makes her so effective as a foster parent? Arlene's there for all of us. She puts us before herself. Kaylee has said it. Nicole has said it. If Madison was more than 10 weeks old, I'm sure she would say it. <laughs> she doesn't uh, even realize she does it, though. She really I, does it. <laughs> I get it. She doesn't take care of herself. And you've, if you watch this show, and I know you do, you've heard me say, you have to take care of yourself no. before you take care of others. Well, maybe it's Arlene's turn. We'll talk about that after the break. You admit that you don't really take time for yourself. We have one other thing for Arlene today. This is it right behind you here. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Well, Arlene, we've we been talking to you. You admit they have outed you, and you admit that you don't really take time for yourself. Um, and even in little ways, sometimes little ways make a big difference, right? I mean, just a few mm -hmm. minutes here, a few minutes there. Uh, Arlene says that she never takes time to go out to eat because she's busy with at least four foster kids. And, of course, it's expensive, and she just never does it. So we, we called Applebee's in your neighborhood. We talked to them about Arlene, and they want to treat you every month to two free entrees where you can come in and sit down for the entire year. You, we want you to go out to dinner uh, every week. Um, you, don't have to, you, you don't have to have dessert there. You can go over to the Marble Slab, which is an ice cream shop that they say stop by any time during the year for ice cream for you and your foster kids. You can come and see them. So we've made those arrangements for you so you have something. But Arlene says she never makes time for herself and doesn't just really relax and kind of nurture herself. So we made arrangements with the Spaza Day Spa, uh, which is in your hometown, for you to go by there at least every three months. Uh, just Even just give yourself this quarterly. Go by there, spend the day with them. Whatever treatments you want to have, that's all set up for you. You can't, this is non-transferable, by the way. <laughs> you can't give this to somebody else. You get massages or facials or whatever you want to take care of yourself a little bit while you're there, okay? <laughs> Kaylee says Arlene never buys anything nice for herself uh, either. So I want to introduce Matt Taylor from J.C. Penney's. Matt, how you doing? I'm doing well. All right. This is Matt Taylor right here. How you doing? Hi. Uh, wh what did you want to say to Arlene? Well, I'd like to honor Arlene also with two $500 gift cards from the JCPenney Company. All right. Great. And we also know that Arlene has a lot of medical bills to pay. Uh, so, and I, I know it gets expensive <laughs> to take care of yourself, right? So, um, we talked to Aflac. I love the Aflac guys. Uh, love the duck. <laughs> Uh, love Aflac, and so they wanted to make a gift to you of $10,000 cash uh, for you to have to take care of yourself. And uh, there we go, right there. Uh, a $10,000 check from Aflac, and you know, this was 
th this is a natural for them because they're the one that uh, pay cash benefits direct to consumers so they can focus on getting better and it never any better application of this than for you, right? Right. Do you, can you think of somewhere that you might uh, be able to use 10 grand? Uh, probably. Yeah, <laughs> you probably don't think about that. Probably. Are you in shock right now? Yes. You seem a little in shock, that's all right. Uh, Arlene told us she drives a lot because her kids have a lot of appointments. And just this past year, she's put 100,000 miles on her car. So maybe you can buy some gas with the $10,000. Uh, but we have one other thing for Arlene as well, because we don't want you putting that gas in that old beat-up car, so we wanted to give you a new car uh, today. This is it right behind you here. This sporty new Acura ILX Hybrid encourages people to move up without settling down. It has a continuously variable transmission, and EP estimates that this thing will get 38 miles a gallon. This, this Acura, I mean, how beautiful is that car? It's just right outside the studio. We're going to walk you right out there in a minute. That's your car. That's your car. And... This Acura, this Acura is a top-of-the-line model with all the technology package in it, which you probably don't know a lot about, but no. it's got like navigation system and Acura ELS surround uh, premium audio system. It's got leather seats all perforated for you there. If you went to buy that, it'd cost you about 35 grand, but it's not going to cost you anything because we just wanted to give it to you. All right. All courtesy of Acura. Um, so, how's your how's your first visit to Dr. Phil Show going <laughs> so far? You got J.C. Pitties here, you got Aflac here, you got Acura there, you got everybody taking care of you because she wrote us a letter to put you in the audience. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I just I don't have the words to explain. Well. That's okay. We get it, and you've been getting it for many, many years with these foster children. Thank you, too, for caring enough about her to come here, to bring her to our attention, and let us honor her. It's our honor, not yours. Trust me. I, I want to thank you for changing the lives of so many children. Uh, it's just made such a big difference. Thanks also to Amber Portwood, Kaylee, and Nicole for sharing their stories with us today. For more information on today's show, you can log on to drphil.com. Robin, I know you wanted to meet her. Why don't you come on up and say hello, and then we'll say goodbye. Please meet my wife, Robin. I'm so happy for you. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. It means so much. It's our honor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks, guys.